Alice Waters started a revolution in 1971, but like Alice herself, it was a gentle, quiet uprising when she opened her now legendary restaurant Chez Panisse in Berkeley across the bay from San Francisco, she'd already made a commitment to serve only the finest and freshest of ingredients. Of course, this is only possible when fine, seasonable produce is available. And with Alice at the forefront, an increasing number of chefs around the country have been encouraging a network of farmers, ranchers, and fishermen to provide them with the best her philosophy was simple. If there's a real demand, then the farmers will plant it, and if we ask for it often enough, we'll get it. It's not surprising that Alice Waters should teach a nation how to eat, since teaching has been her life. After graduating from the University of California at Berkeley, she spent time in London, training at the original Montessori School, and then she traveled to France, where she fell in love with the country, the people, and the food. Returning to Berkeley to finish her studies, she began cooking French dinners at home for friends. Soon friends began bringing friends and friends of friends, and Alice found she had to charge for her meals. Thus, literally and gradually began Chez Panisse. Alice Waters has become a benign legend, an icon, and I think we're fortunate indeed that she's consented to be with us on our MasterChef series to share some of her thoughts and feelings and her techniques with food. Before I joined her in her home kitchen, Alice took me shopping at her favorite local market, where, as she said, we'll let the vegetables lead us around. With beautiful fresh produce, a presentation can be as simple as this fragrant fennel salad she's about to show us with its fresh mushrooms, aromatic Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese, and fruity olive oil. We bought this fennel today. Now what are you going to do with it? Oh, well, this is a wonderful winter vegetable. It's really my favorite. And uh, we're going to make a, 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 a fennel salad by mm -hmm. slicing the fennel very, very thinly. And um, I think that slicing it uh, that way um, gives a whole different texture Mm -hmm. uh, to a salad, well, and, and it makes you... Uh, nibbling, and it makes a different taste, right. I think. Now, one question is, this is so young and tender, but mostly in the market we get great big ones with. Well, I think it doesn't really matter so much with fennel. I think mm. you can use it at all different stages. It's just that when it gets very, very big, there's mm. a kind of a core in the center, and well, you might want to take in, that out, uh -huh. that little part right there. Mm -hmm. you, can just, you can just cut it out with the point of the knife. Mm -hmm like that mm -hmm. and and slice from there when it's very That's thick. That's a good idea. But when yeah. it's but when it's little like that, you just kind of want to take off take off the ends and you can always use this lovely greenery mm -hmm. to stuff into a, a piece of fish or mm -hmm. sprinkle chop up and sprinkle mm -hmm. on the top. Pretty. And I this slice the fennel like that very, very thinly. On this uh, a very inexpensive Japanese mandolin. It, um, it changes these winter vegetables. We do it with uh, turnips and slice them like mm, that and have mm. them part of it. Or radishes mm, are very mm. uh, nice to slice. And I'm just going to lay that around and put a, little, put a little salt and a little pepper on each layer. This is mm. kind of one of those layer salads where you're mm -hmm. doing fennel on the bottom and then mushrooms and then the cheese on the top. So I'll put a little drizzle of oil on, mm. on each layer. And then um, the mushrooms, uh, I think the, the really important thing about the mushrooms is that they're very, very fresh and they're tight, mm -hmm. completely tight. Mm -hmm. Did you make up this salad yourself? I think this is one that's really very chez it's, Go on. it's light and it's it, very, very simple. I mean, this really is uh, just means, again, that you have to find the the ingredients that are exactly in season. I can smell the perfume of those mushrooms. That is very, very pleasant. And again, this is one that you want to eat very, very quickly. Just make it mm -hmm. and serve it. Mm -hmm. and a lovely just, fragrance. And then on this layer, uh, I'm going to put a little bit, of, little bit of salt again, a little pepper, and a drizzle. Mm. Oh, here. When it's raw, you have to have very good oil, don't you? I think olive oil um, uh, can be used to flavor things very sparingly. Uh, mm -hmm. The very good oils 
Um, and then, of course, there's a lesser grade oil mm -hmm. uh, that's pure and clean that you can use as an all-purpose oil and just use this for the special mm -hmm. salad mm -hmm. uh, put on the top. Okay, we just need to squeeze a little lemon. Maybe you want to squeeze okay. a little over the salad while I'm uh, doing the cheese. And this is uh, uh, Parmesan cheese. Real Parmesan. Real Parmesan cheese. And I think when you, again, when you're using a, uh, doing a salad that's so simple that all the ingredients need to be Perfect. very tasty mm. and, and, and of some good quality. That and you don't cooking, use very much of the cheese on it. That makes cooking really easier because you can be simpler but use wonderful ingredients. Or... It's also very quick. <laughs> very quick. And that's it. So, are we going to taste it and see if Absolutely. it's any good? <laughs> we have. But again, this salad, can you can add a little bit more. Mm. Well, the cheese gives it a wonderful fullness of taste. It's, it's that's like an awfully good idea. That's what the, the Italians use so much of it, isn't it? Well, it, it adds a sort of salt to it, too, mm -hmm. and, and puts a balance to the fresh fennel and the mushrooms. Well, I should certainly have that for dinner tonight. That fennel salad is like so much of my favorite food in Italy, where the beauty of the ingredients demands the simplest presentation. Note how paper thin that fennel was sliced in the cheese, so that they release their subtle flavors while softening and practically melting together. And now for Alice's Mediterranean tapenade, that sturdy mixture of olives and anchovies and capers laced with fragrant olive oil. Hers is really the best I've ever eaten, even better than mine. Rather than pureeing everything together, she chops each item individually and it makes a real difference. Well, I thought um, that we might make a tapenade, which is well, that I... olive paste from Provence. There was plenty of garlic in it. And lots of garlic. Uh, uh, these are um, some green olives. These are a French picholine olive. Mm. I think we'll begin by, by just pitting the olives, and I press the knife against the, against the olive. Mm -hmm. They don't go all over the place. <laughs> you have to really press down mm -hmm. so they come mm -hmm. off very easily. And uh, it's really just chopping up, chopping up the, the olives, the garlic, the anchovies, and the capers, and mixing mm -hmm. them together with the olive oil. Oops, and don't get any of the pits in there either. Yeah. <laughs> And then I'll just put this in with the rest of the chopped olives there. And these are uh, salt pack anchovies. They are very, very different from those, as you know, the ones mm -hmm. that you get in, in a little jar with, yeah. with olive oil in them. And you, if it looks like a terribly big can, but you can repack them with the salt. And then they last indefinitely. And they can last in the refrigerator mm -hmm. covered for a long yeah. time. But you just take out that little anchovy dip it in the water to rinse mm -hmm. it. And then you want to fillet it uh, by pulling, pulling it apart like this, mm -hmm. taking off one Isn't fillet it of it. terribly fence. salty? It is salty now, but mm -hmm. not terribly. Surprisingly, less than those you get into the jar. And then you mm -hmm. take out that little bone. Mm -hmm. And with the fillets, you can soak them if they're very salty. If the yeah. olives are very salty, then mm -hmm. you probably want to soak the anchovies. Mm -hmm. Because this really provides the salt that you need in your, in your mixture. Maybe. Exactly. You know. And then I'm going to take a couple of anchovies, chop those up finely too, to put in, in there. I think now that as they've said, oh, we were so afraid of salt, no salt. <coughs> and now that they've found that a non, not being an excessive, well, I think that, that that's it, sick or that that's the whole point, that you really have to think about everything in moderation. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. if you eat a whole bowl, well, that's a different story, but I think you really have to have to have a, a good balance. It's something that like cream of wheat without salt is just absolutely, it's hay anyway, and then if you, <laughs> <laughs> with no salt, it's worse. <laughs> 
And then uh, we're going to put some capers in. And again, these, these capers uh, are packed in salt mm -hmm. rather than uh, in a little jar with that brine mm -hmm. that uh, leaches out all the flavor. And uh, these are available now. In, yes, we uh, saw some in little packages, didn't exactly. we? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can, again, um, you know, put them in water to take mm -hmm. more of the salt out and uh, keep them very easily in the refrigerator mm -hmm. in that salted condition. So well, take really a few. Well, the proportions aren't terribly important. As you said, you taste as you go along. Exactly. You're not adding too many capers, just a little bit. Just, and you can add them bit by bit, so then you can uh, decide how, how, how you want it to be in the end. And taste at every opportunity. Absolutely. Uh -huh. So it's a great chopping movement. I like the sound of it also. And then, of course, uh, the garlic. The garlic. The garlic. Very important. At this time of year, the garlic has a little, uh, little green center in it, mm -hmm. uh, which is the, the germ, and it's beginning yeah. to sprout. It probably wouldn't be noticeable in a strong mm -hmm. mixture like yeah. this, but usually when I'm, I'm using the garlic in a raw state, mm -hmm. I take that out because it's a little bitter. Very important to me is that the garlic is chopped last. It's the mm -hmm. last thing that you put in because it oxidizes so quickly, and you oh. don't want to keep it. Uh, well, that's something uh, that well, most people don't realize, including me. You can uh. sometimes cover it with oil, and it will keep a little bit. But but really, it's 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 like a it's a wonderful perfume, mm -hmm. and if you if you let it expose to the air, it really changes mm -hmm. that. Yeah. that in there too. And then um, it's a, a matter of mixing this, these ingredients together and putting some olive oil in which makes the paste. And then you and, uh, I imagine you just keep tasting. Uh, and a little squeeze, squeeze of lemon. These are these Meyer lemons, that orange. But they're a little bit sweeter. Love the smell of this. And then a little bit, just a little, a little touch of candy. Mm. Well, that's a nice. That's only well, just a few drops. I've always had it ground up in a in a mixer. I'll be interested to see it. Again. I think that's very good. It's I think you have more taste in the little pieces than you do all ground up. Well, it's a, di it's a different uh, mixture. Mm. I, I, I like that Very little, nice. little crunch of anchovy. And I'm just going to grill the bread uh, without any oil on it. But once the toast is grilled, I usually just spread it with some tapenade. And this is pleasantly sourdough bread. This is a little sour, but I think any good. Mm -hmm. any good bread, um, sort of good flavorful bread, makes mm -hmm. wonderful uh, toast. Makes wonderful garlic toast. Oh, this is delicious. Mm. In dishes like the tapenade, the intensity of the ingredients will vary. Consider recipes like this to be only a guide. Add and subtract ingredients according to how it tastes to you. You know, I just happen to love beets. And when combined with blood oranges and rocket lettuce as Alice Waters presents them, they're simply quite divine. If you don't think much of canned beets, try fresh beets. They have a special taste all their own, and they're one of our very best root vegetables. But we're going to make a salad with uh this rocket lettuce, that or arugula, as they call it, and uh, with um, these beets of different colors, mm -hmm. and um, blood oranges. Are they available most anywhere? They're, um, they have become available in California, and I think that uh, it shows that when people demand something, that the farmers begin to plant it. And five years ago, you couldn't find blood oranges, mm -hmm. and now they are everywhere. But I'm going to begin with uh, the zest of this orange, and then I'll just slice it up. 
just the orange, the top mm -hmm. of the orange, and yeah. not the pith inside. And uh, I think it gives a, a nice uh, flavor to the vinaigrette to have some of the, the zest. It's very different tasting than the, than the uh, slices of orange. And then um, to slice it, uh, uh, this one that happens to be really, very red that's and a nice. really bloody one, uh, Just take off the ends and then very carefully just just cut around the orange so to to uh, take off all the the pith. Mm -hmm. And then you can always squeeze the juice out of the little pieces that you've cut off. Uh, and then you can just slice these. It's, in it's interesting the color of this kind of striation, isn't it? I think they're just beautiful and beautiful and make a salad uh, mm. just sparkle and they're from the very deep red. Some of them are completely red red. Mm -hmm. so there isn't any, really any difference in the taste, is there? Not really. And they're not strikingly different from other oranges except that they're incredibly that they're red. beautiful. Oh. Incredibly That's beautiful. a nice juicer. Very take easy. Up too much room. And this is, uh, it has this just gorgeous mm -hmm. Juice. And then, let's see what we want to do next is uh, put a little, cut up a shallot. And uh, I'm very sensitive about uh, cutting up both garlic and shallots mm -hmm. in a vinaigrette because um, you don't want the strong juices of them to come out. And so you're, you're, you want to dice them instead of sort of pressing and chopping mm -hmm. at, yeah. the, at them. And I usually cut the cut the shallot in half and then just peel the skin off so that you have the little end there to keep the, the shallot mm -hmm. intact. And then if you slice very carefully, crosswise like that, and then slice down this way, you can, you can make a little dice without any of the juices coming out mm. into the it's a very sharp knife on here. And we always make uh, uh, vinaigrettes this way. And then uh, put them in the, the vinegar and the acidity, Probably. preserves yeah. it. And a little well, bit of salt and uh, a little feel bit about, of sherry vinegar. about um, dicing shallots ahead? Well, I think that they shouldn't be diced yeah. ahead. Yeah. I think uh, uh, they can stay for a little while if they're kept in the vinegar. Mm -hmm. Because okay. then the flavor goes into the vinegar and they aren't exposed to the air. But you never want to sit them out or put them in a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those things that's done at the last minute and it makes the salad mm -hmm. feel very mm -hmm. fresh tasting too. So mm -hmm. I stir that. And up this and is just simply a matter of taste. Mm -hmm. And I like uh, vinaigrettes on the acidic side, but some people. Um, um, like them a little bit more with a little bit more oil and mm -hmm. it depends on the balance of the things that you have and because this has oranges in it I might put a little bit more oil in the vinaigrette than mm -hmm. I would normally to compensate. Well, it's, it's up to your taste. And then just add olive oil to it. And your delicious olive oil. You don't know how much you're going to be wanting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I always... Now this one's some more Acidity up a little bit more oh. orange in. And maybe a little bit more of this sherry vinegar. Have you got another spoon? I'd love to taste that. Mmm, that's nice. I think it's because that does give a little bit of sweet that you want without. I'm going to put a little bit of the vinaigrette on the mm -hmm. beets to begin with because you have to be careful about keeping the very red beets away from the yes. less red ones. Uh, I just put the, the beets around mm -hmm. on the platter. Is that it's a good idea not mixing them up? And these lovely little maroon ones. Well, that's looking very nice. And then um, a few, a few walnuts. You know, that rather acts the way the cheese does. It gives it yeah. kind of a meaty taste too. 
Well, that looks good enough to eat, I must say. And then you little, put a little more. A little bit of vinaigrette on the top. Yeah. And there it is. There's a fork. Should we eat a little bit? I think we have to have a taste. The arugula is interesting. That's become very popular, hasn't it, now? Well, I think uh, the, the, the range of salad greens that we have is just mm -hmm. extraordinary. And the, the arugula is my mm -hmm. favorite. It's got that little nutty taste mm. like the walnuts. The beets are just delicious. Oh. Mm -hmm. Alice Waters sees the bounty of the winter garden in rich shades of green. During those slow garden months, she garnishes every plate with a sauté of sometimes unlikely treasures that she and her team have foraged. For a dish of warm, wilted green, she will use a combination such as kale, broccoli rabe, mustard green, spinach, turnip or beet tops, Swiss chard, and a few thin slices of prosciutto for excitement. After picking over and washing the greens and leaving them a little damp, Alice strips the leaves from their center stalks, which she discards. Then she chops the leaves into large pieces. Two tablespoons of good olive oil go into the saute pan, and about half the greens and a little water. And she cover and cooks a minute or two until they sink down. Now she piles in the rest. Adds a little dribble of water and a good pinch of salt. She covers the pan and lets it cook about 15 minutes, shaking and tossing now and then. When they're wilted and tender, they're done. Then let them cool until you can squeeze out the excess liquid with your bare hands. Meanwhile, the vinaigrette. First, the garlic. It needs pureeing. For that, Alice has two methods. Here's her ingenious fork method. She rubs the peeled garlic clove over the tines of a table fork, and look, it's pureed. But she really prefers to use her great Italian mortar and pestle. She never uses a garlic press because she feels it releases bitter juices. She roughly cuts the peeled garlic and pounds it to a paste, adding a little salt. When it's absolutely smooth, she blends in a dollop of red wine vinegar and stirs in about half a cup of her fine extra virgin olive oil. Now Chef Alice puts it all together. These are the greens that have all been squeezed and they're, they're moist but, but um, ready to be dressed with the vinaigrette. I'll just put a little bit on at the beginning and, uh, and toss those around. Those we can are taste. very useful, aren't they? Uh, I can see. I'm going to pile them up and garnish the plate with some of these uh, mm. slices of prosciutto. That's very pretty. And I think we'll garnish this with a few of these uh, these mustard blossoms. Oh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. On the top. Now this you could have as a luncheon dish or an hors d'oeuvre. Or, or make a little garlic toast. and. Put it on the Usually side. Your favorite garlic, yeah. <laughs> I think that's lovely and, and, and easy to do. Very easy. Oh. Alice Waters has had a real influence on our food. Her tireless efforts to promote freshness, quality, and variety have been a strong incentive for using fine produce, not only among our chefs and restaurants, but her influence has reached all the way into our supermarkets. Thank you, Alice Waters. For cooking with Master Chefs, I'm Julia Child. Bon appetit. Bon appétit